Hey guys, this is your host Eric. Today we are going to watch action genre movie called The Expendables 3. Spoilers ahead, turn on your subtitle, I greatly appreciate your support. Enjoy the video. The film starts with Barney Ross and his disposables Lee Christmas. Dr. Death, a knife specialist and team medic, was extracted from a military prison by Gunnar Jensen and Toll Road during his transfer on it. Doc Death emerges from his cage and immediately runs and kills every guard on the train. After that, he speeds up the train to hit the wall of the military prison while completing his task. Christmas tells Ross to forget him and leave him, but Ross refuses. Then he tells Doc to get into the helicopter once more. Dr. Death waits for Ross to jump over the aircraft. Death bombs the military prison, which later escapes. Ross enlists Dr. Death's help in intercepting a shipment of bombs bound for the warlord in Somalia. While on the ship, Ross assures Christmas that Dr. Death is a good medic who can be replaced. Dr. Death then approaches them, revealing that he's not going home because they're going to stop a dealer named Victor Menz from delivering a shipment of thermobaric. The Expendables and Ross reunite with Hail Caesar, who directs them to the drop point on Somalia. Following that, they begin hunting the ship's leader while gradually killing the men on guard. To Russ's surprise, he discovers that the arms trader supplying the bombs is Conrad Stonebanks, a former Expendables co-founder who went rogue and was presumed dead. During the ensuing firefight, Ross and the Expendables kill everyone and chase Stonebanks. Stonebanks, on the other hand, shoots Caesar twice and drops a glide bomb on them from his helicopter, forcing them to flee. Unfortunately, Caesar is severely injured in the United States. Ross and the Expendables pay a visit to Caesar, who is critically injured as a result of the explosion. Ross places the ring beside his table inside the hospital to bring him luck for fasting. He then exits the room when Arnold unexpectedly approaches him and reminds him to stay out of business. Ross, on the other hand, refuses to agree. Ross then walks out of the hospital as Ross walks out of the hospital. Max Drummer is a CIA operative. He meets the Expendables' new mission manager. Drummer introduces himself and informs Ross that the church has already been ruled out. Ross then informs him that the church informed him that the target's name is Victor, Minnesota. However, Victor, Minnesota's given name is Stone. So the drummer responds that he doesn't care about the name and is only interested in getting him. The drummer then assigns Ross the mission of apprehending Stone Banks and bringing him before the International Criminal Court for War Crimes. Ross later meets with the Expendables. Unfortunately, Ross holds himself responsible for Caesar's injuries. Then he tells them that they are no longer in the future, and that, unfortunately for them, they are already a part of. Everyone remains silent until Christmas asks if Ross's speech is going anywhere. So Ross reasons that he won't be able to live with them if they don't change things. From now on, I'll advise Ross to demand the expendables and then leave the bar. Christmas tries unsuccessfully to persuade Ross to reconsider his decision. Following that, Ross travels to Las Vegas, where he hires retired mercenary-turned-recruiter Bonaparte to assist him in finding a new team of younger Merc. Bonaparte leads the way for Ross's new team without hesitation. Eventually, Bonaparte travels with Ross to introduce him to recruiters in various locations. Ross's new team now includes a nightclub bouncer named Luna and a computer expert named Thor. When they arrive in Arizona, they are met by skilled sharpshooter Gogo, who has forged his resume. As a result, Ross declines him. Last but not least, Bonaparte travels to Edwards Air Force Base in California to meet with a weapons expert. The final candidate is Bonaparte, who arrives in Mexico with Ross. Then he introduces John Smiley, a former U.S. Marine who finishes his wrestling game to earn money. At first, John is hesitant to accept Ross's offer, so Ross concludes that they are wasting his time talking to John and departs. Then, seconds later, John calls out Ross's name and says, I'm not wasting my time, implying that he accepts Ross's offer to join his team. After a while, Ross starts his car when the drummer starts talking in the back and asks Ross about his vacation. Instead of answering the drummer's question, Ross inquires about Stonebank's location. So the drummer says Stonebanks is in Bucharest making a deal with some Albanian mobster, and Ross only has 36 hours to catch Stonebank before he goes off the grid. Drummer then hands Ross a satellite map of the co, which shows where Stonebanks will be later. Drummer drops an envelope because the agency has a local safe house set up for him. The following day, the former Expendables confront the recruits and threaten to fight, but Mar intervenes. Then he tells them all that it's just a job. So Christmas orders the veteran Expendables to be released. But before they do, John remarks that they are a bunch of, has been still trying to be. It. They come to a halt and look at John, much to their surprise. Then, as John tries not to fight him, Christian tells him that he's young and stupid. Christmas suddenly throws a knife at John, who narrowly avoids it. Doc Death then sings as he smirks at John. Christmas then tells John to keep the knife because he will need it on their mission. Ross and the recruits then begin their mission. While on the plane, John inquires of Ross as to why they are capturing Stone. 
Ross hesitates at first, but John persists, so he gives John the file on stone banks in response to his question. Meanwhile, the former expendables pass the time on their own while Caesar recovers the next day. Ross and the recruits begin their mission by locating Stonebanks' residence in an office building. Fortunately, Stonebanks captures the recruits' attention after Ross signals them to perform. Ross strategizes with the recruits on how to take Stonebank, so Varn reveals his plan. He will first hack the central server of the security grid, then bypass the motion detector lasers and biometric sensors. He will then override the surveillance video and CCTV systems to allow them in. Fortunately, Ross approves and begins their mission later that night. Ross and the recruits infiltrate an office building and must kill a few men as they enter while on their mission. Foreign informs Ross that the buyer has arrived. As a result, the new recruiters continue to snipe the men on guard. Stonebanks is dealing with Joran Vada. Ross radios his team to position themselves and then fire everyone, including Joran VAS buyer, while they talk. Fortunately, Luna captures Stonebanks while they are in transit. Ross is taunted by Stonebanks, who explains why he betrayed the expendable. So Ross speaks up. Then he tells the stone banks that he will break every bone in his body and drop whatever remains at the Hague when they arrive. As a result, stone banks laughs and repeats the word the Hague. Then he tells Ross that he's a war criminal and asks if he can be delivered like a package. Ross, on the other hand, remains silent. So stone banks confronts Ross about the construction expendables and the marks they left. Then he says that Ross hires stone banks team and the entire gang to apprehend him. However, Ross tragically killed their brothers in order to stop the stone banks from falling into his dark. The situation has gotten out of hand. Ross nearly kills Stonebanks to silence him, but despite Stonebanks' encouragement, Ross backs down. Then, sadly, Stonebanks activates his GPS tracker. Stonebanks' man has now caught up with them and fired a missile at the team's van. Then, because of Stonebanks' weapon, Ross is thrown into a river while Stonebanks' crew captures Smiley, Luna Thorn, and Mars. Following that, Stonebanks' orders as intended. Ross assassinates Stonebanks' retrieval team and flees on the river. Following that, Ross finds himself in an abandoned location, spots one of his men, and leads him on their plane. While Ross is on the ship, Stonebank sends him a video in which he challenges Ross to track him down and gives him his location in Istan. As he watches, he notices his recruits tied up, so Stonebanks gives him 48 hours. PGO finds Ross and offers his services once more as he prepares to leave Mount a rescue alone. Fortunately for Ross, the engines, planes, and veteran expendables appear to accompany him. So Ross yells through the window what they're doing, and Christmas responds by saying that he's the only one stupid enough to get himself into this mess, and that they're the only ones crazy enough to get Ross out of it without a choice. Ross allowed his old team to continue. Later, they arrive at the location and discover where Stonebanks hides the recruits while walking. Ross questions why his team let him go, providing the entire story. They eventually find the location. It's an abandoned eight-story building with no guards. Then, after a while, they see the young mercenaries and rescue them, only to learn from Stonebanks that he has rigged the place with explosives with only 45 seconds for them to do so. Thorn immediately makes his way to save them. To Stonebanks' surprise, Thorn then uses a jammer device to delay the countdown, giving them just under half an hour before detonation. He directs the ASIST and army to launch a full-scale assault on the building, including tanks and attack helicopters. Meanwhile, the device Doc Death informs the Expendables that they are still in danger, despite Thorne's successful jamming. As they watch the enemies flee, the young hand veteran Expendables fight one-on-one, -on -one, so Ross persuades them to work together to demolish stone walls. Fortunately, they all listen afterwards. Ross explains his strategy. They will form small groups and proceed through the ground floor. As they move, the ASIST and army begin to infiltrate the building. The battle will begin later. The Expendables begin firing and use their weapon to keep the enemies at bay as they fight. Smiley nearly falls into the hole with a burning fire. Fortunately, he quickly grabs a rope to keep himself from falling. Drummer and Trench, along with returning Expendables member Yin Yang, arrive in a helicopter to assist. The Expendables' new and veteran members are now working together to assassinate Stonebank's man. Meanwhile, Drummer successfully repels Stonebank's helicopter, while Gunner and Smiley take the Aztostan tank and engage the remaining enemies. Doc Death and Christmas, on the other hand, battle the enemies within the building. When the second wave arrives, Smiley informs Ross that they have reinforced. According to Ross Radio's Drummer, another wave is on its way. Drummer then lands on the building to evacuate the team, while Ross orders everyone to run to the rooftop as soon as possible. Stonebanks personally attacks Ross after shooting him down in order to get into Drummer's chopper. Unfortunately, Ross is shot as Stonebanks challenges him to a fight to the death. On the other hand, Drummer tries to radio Ross because he is the only one they haven't seen yet. 
drummer does not receive any messages. Meanwhile, Stone Banks orders Ross to remove his armor so that he can feel the gun inside his body. So, after being forced to remove his armor and weapon, Ross and Stone Banks engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Despite being shot, Ross manages to fight with Stonebank while ignoring the Christmas message to go into the chopper. As they fight, Smiley shoots that the battery is only at 1%. Nonetheless, Ross is still fighting Stone. Ross gets the better of Stone as he tries to shoot. Stone Banks questions Ross about delivering him to the International Criminal Court seconds later, but Ross Coley responds with a gun. When Thorne's device's battery runs out of charge, Ross flees as the bombs explode inside the building. As Ross approaches the rooftop, Everyone believes he will fall as the building explodes. When the helicopter moves, they notice Ross holding the rope that ties the helicopter to the ground. The team arrives at Drummer's helicopter and takes off to safety. From the outside, Ross clings to it. The film concludes with the Expendables celebrating at a bar. As Caesar recovers from his injuries and Ross officially accepts, Luna, Thorne, and Mars have joined the team. The Drummer, on the other hand, informs Ross that he never got stone bangs into the hay. But Ross responds, working with him has never been more difficult and shakes hands. Following that, Gogo approaches Ross to speak with him and persuades him to rejoin his team. As a sign of being an official team member, Ross shuts him up and says, Welcome aboard. We really appreciate you watching. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell because it is really important for us. Thank you.